Good day, my name is Scott Kenny with Discovery Education, and this is our One Idea series. Today, I am joined by Monica Armenta, who is the Executive Director of Communications at the Albuquerque Public Schools. Monica, welcome. Hi, Scott. Thank you for inviting me. What a pleasure it is to see you. So, Monica, you have a, a very a fascinating background. You spent over 20 years in TV uh, and TV news and now have spent almost a decade in public education. Um, so, clearly, you started when you were five years old. Uh, but how is, I'm just curious, how has the transition been between television and uh, public education? Well, I was rather naive. If you had told me 10 years ago that this job is what it is, I may have thought twice. Um, I love the work, but clearly public education is a challenge, especially the last decade or so with budgets and testing. And um, I've, I'm a product of Albuquerque Public Schools. My kids went to Albuquerque Public Schools, so I have really a lot of faith and a lot of passion. But it's a, I don't think anyone would argue that it's, it's a difficult world, but very fulfilling. I love the work. That's great. Now, speaking of Albuquerque Public Schools, you recently have a new acting superintendent that's come in. Uh, and one of the first initiatives was the listening tour, the superintendent's listening tour. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? We're very fortunate. Our acting superintendent is Raquel Reedy. And um, Superintendent Reedy started in just about everything you can imagine. She's been with the district now, I think, 30-some years, but wow. she started in special ed, teaching some of the blind and hearing-impaired kids, went from special education to bilingual ed, teacher, principal, worked up the ranks. One of the things that's always been very important to her is listening um, and hearing. What happens, I think, in public education sometimes is that we have a lot of different setups where people can come and be heard, but primarily what ends up happening is that we hear from factions, right? We hear from the unions, we hear from people who maybe are opposed to testing, different groups with specific, very specific items they want um, heard. What we don't always get is the feedback on a daily basis from the people we serve, so parents and students in real time. Mm -hmm. And what's fascinating in setting up the superintendent's listening tour is that what we're starting to learn is most of what's on the minds of our students and our families aren't necessarily the same things that the school board and the media pay attention to. So it has been... Um, really one of the more intriguing projects I've been involved in with in APS and its original content. To my knowledge, there aren't any other districts taking this exact strategy. So what we've done is uh, we have seven school board members. We asked seven different principals who represent each one of those board members districts to find us the profile of a student. Hmm. So for one school board member, could you please find us a Native American middle school uh, person who's in gifted? Then we'd reach out to that family and we'd ask that family, would you be willing to have the superintendent either join you in your home for dinner or join her out for dinner? The superintendent and two people from the communications department go out with this family. We take dinner in. We've not gone to a restaurant yet. Everyone has wanted her in their home. And we uh, sit in the back and we take notes. And it's wide open. The parents and the students can talk to her about anything they'd like. And again, um, it's interesting what they choose to converse about. Yeah, so that was actually going to be one of my questions was, is it, is it what you expected to hear from, uh, from a positioning perspective? Is this what you talk to parents about it? Are their concerns the same as what you thought you might hear? Universally, parents want their children to do well. And they want some reassurances that we as a school district are doing everything possible to guarantee that their students are going to get the quality education they need to succeed in life. So that has not been a surprise. What is a surprise in some ways, um, and in some ways not, is how complex these families are. I think that when we talk in terms of public education in America, whether you're talking about, you know, common core, graduation rate, I don't know that people spend enough time really thinking about the intricacies of the families we serve. For a lot of them, um, you know, the most pressing issue on, on the table is how am I going to get 
the money I need to sign Junior up for Little League? Or is there going to be enough money for summer camp? Or in one family, we had four different children who all attended different schools Mm. and those parents physically drove them to and from school every day even though between the two parents they were holding down four jobs so when you get past some of life's necessities and then you're still not still but foremost in your mind is making sure your kid does better than you did so they have a better chance it becomes a real a real challenge and i think that we're struck by that Every time we sit down, is there one thing that has surprised you, either either good or bad, but that really just you weren't expecting to hear, but that you hear uh, consistently? I think the one top thing is that parents want better communication with their teachers. They really want to know how they can communicate. And, and in this day and age, right, where everybody has some sort of 24-7 robocall system or texting right. or there's email or the rest, what hasn't changed is that the responsibilities for the teacher, just as for the family, haven't lessened any. So I, I think we're surprised to hear just how real that uh, desire is to be in touch more often with a a child's teacher so that they can keep tabs on progress, so that they can be instrumental in making sure that student follows through at home. That is the the one um, thing that has has surprised uh, me a little bit, and I think the superintendent would would say the same thing. So that leads me to my next question. When, When you hear things like that, what are the action items? I assume you're out there uh, having rich dialogue, but at the same time, there's there's something to be done with all that information that you're collecting. What are the action items, and, and what does that process look like? We try to be very thorough going into this to have all of that set up ahead of time so that we're able not just um, to record the conversations, but to bring them back to present to the Board of Education, to the community at some point, and also, as we go through each one of these dinners, the superintendent is specific, specifically listening to see if there are patterns. Are there some things that parents are saying about uh, special ed IEPs that there's common language or common challenges about? Is there a department that stands out for going above and beyond so she can pick up the phone and call them and tell them? That's are cool. there parents who need the follow-up? So yes, we are not just documenting what we've learned, but we are coming back to write a full report. There'll be an executive summary. She has already done one presentation to the Board of Education as these dinners continue because it's sort of open-ended. If they continue to be as beneficial and and as enlightening as they have been thus far, then what we hope to do is, you know, then go out and um, raise some money, set aside some cash so that we can continue with this indefinitely. And maybe the next round is not so much with parents, but with teachers and then with staff. Oh, because great. again, what we what we know in a school district is that unless you're in a boardroom or a big informal public meeting in uh, in a PAC somewhere where sticky notes are being taken, you don't often get that opportunity for, for one-on-one. And we all know that it's the relationships and the conversations that we have with each other, just like you and I are having now, that resonate a, a little more and that are really more difficult to forget. And for a superintendent, for a superintendent to be armed when he or she goes out with real stories and real time is gold. That's right. So it, it's it's it, important. That's fantastic. If I'm a superintendent and I want to learn more about your process, um, can how do I how do I learn more about what Albuquerque Public Schools is doing related to the listening tour? Well, we certainly have some information on the website, or you can contact me directly, um, Monica Armenta. 505-362-6108 as the communications person for a, a large urban school district. I think my phone number is on every billboard in town anyway. All the communications <laughs> directors will tell you that. You know, media knows our numbers by far, but we're happy to share. I think one of the greatest things that happens, um, you know, I worked in TV news for, for 23 years, and generally in a newsroom, even though there's not 
so much that's new. People are very protective about their information. I don't find that to be true in public education. People are very, very eager to share what they know and what they've done if they think it's going to benefit another district. Plus, public education, you really don't need to keep reinventing the wheel. There are a lot of things that we borrow from each other that work beautifully regardless of, of where you are. We'd be happy to share any, any information we have. We, we've also promised our families that we would not breach their confidentiality so that only with their permission have we taken photos and some video. And at the end of the process, those families who have allowed us to will be part of um, you know, a, a video, so it's part of the whole package, so people can see for themselves who these families were and how it worked. Well, fantastic. And Monica, thank you for sharing your knowledge and information with the educational community. Thanks. Thanks to Discovery. You're always doing great things. We appreciate it. This is uh, Monica Armenta, the Executive Director of Albuquerque Public Schools uh, in the Communications Department. Thanks again for joining today.